Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's another industry street. And I've, you know, I've hunted this guy down for a long time. He's one of my good friends. But, you know, because people are busy, 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 busy. This gentleman here, he's one of my proper bona fides. We have a lot of respect from each other. I remember him from way, way back. And he, he, he they were a duo at a time. But this was the founder of one of the pioneer radio stations. We all know LWR. We all know about Caroline and all that sort of stuff. We all know about Supreme Radio. We all know about Conscious Radio. We all know about Station FM. But ladies and gentlemen, there was one station that I recognised when I was a little nipper. And the station I grew up to listen to. And the station that I listened to and was wondering who was behind it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got the man with me right now. Because you all know who I'm speaking about. If you know about the radio vicinity the way I know about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome for the industry street, the one and only... Go on, tell them who you are. Tony P in the house. T Tony P, the original Mr. Rock to Rock. Am I right saying that, Tony? Yeah, you can say that. I All right, but before that. Tony got into that, there's a story. <laughs> How did Rock to Rock happen? Who was the creator behind Rock to Rock? Who was the person that decided to go on roof and put transmitter and and sweat themselves out and get themselves into madness? Well, ladies and ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say, Tony P, this is all about your life. Tony P was born in South London, which I do know. Unless he's going to correct me. Some people say they were Birmingham. Some people say they were Ireland. Some people will say. But Tony P, I do believe, was a little nipper in South London. Am I right saying that, Tony? Lewisham, get it straight. Lewisham, born and bred. Born and bred. L Lewisham, what are you called? Lewisham, Tony and or whatever? Lewisham, man, Lewisham. Oh, Lewisham. Born and bred, man. So, Tony, as a young nipper, what was your upbringing like? What was your schooling like, Tony? My upbringing, uh, kind of typical, you know, West Indian, so we say Jamaican parents. They didn't really have a lot. And we never really had a lot, you know. But they made sure we went to school. I've got a brother and a sister. You know, mum and dad made sure we went to school on time and we was never shabby guy at school. We was always well dressed. But we were poor. We weren't rich or nothing. But, you know, as far as we concerned, it was a good life. But we, we, we weren't rich by any means. But my mum and dad made sure we went to school and we were well dressed and we wash and we brush our teeth and all that. So a general typical sort of like West Indian, West Indian growing up story really so nothing. you didn't have no church life or nothing like that well right? yeah you know the Sunday school the know the van used to come in on Sunday but you know you used to hide under the bed or something you don't want to go to the Sunday school you know didn't really want to go but we had to go until I told my mum I was getting headaches from the pastor because he talked too loud and she stopped me going no, big skank that's when my skanking life started <laughs> <laughs> I think I was about seven <laughs> so at school then, what was schooling like in general? I mean, did you get any exams, GSEs, any sitting you know, in guilds or, or not really? Let me tell you something. School to me was just fantastic. I love school. Where else would you go and ramp for about nine hours? The solid totally ramping. There was nothing about going going class and all that. It was a ramp all day. Tony, you loved friends. it when it was dinner time, right? <laughs> <laughs> The treacle pudding and custard. No, Did you no, like no that treacle, time? man. No, no was it? Um, <laughs> Roly poly. Spotted, spotted dick, spotted dick and spotted custard. Dick. <laughs> and you get the chocolate, was it? Chocolate um, chocolate sponge with the green custard. Brian. The green custard, man. Come on now. That was, that was the highlight of the day. Friday, everyone's at school, fish and chips. Wow. You know, and you get the crackling out the fryer. The crackling. Remember the crackling? We used to get, beg to the chip yeah, shop for the crackling. Beg. I can remember one time at school, they had... Um, the, the um, was it the, was it the spotty dick and um we are you know like like oliver too we said can we have some more please? <laughs> <laughs> and they said no you can't get no more so you know we sneak around the back of teeth the whole train wow and i never went, went that mad though yeah so. we went in the play like eating with our hands I mean, that's another story isn't it? that's a whole other story. so tony from schooling obviously d um did you manage to walk away with any any qualifications uh oh if you call them gcse but they weren't really them time it was um GSE, there was GSE in it, or there was one before that, I can't remember, but nothing to write home about, I could, I've got a quiver of O level in certain things, but it's like a O level grade, I don't know, grade four or something, I don't know. nothing to write home about, I didn't really come out with flying colours. 
Did you have any bona fide people that you used to hang with at school that you could yeah, say were your partners? In school, yeah, I had a lot of a lot of people around me. Um, in fact, I built well, we built a sound when I was about 15, 14. 13, I think. It's like built that sound. It's called Atra. And uh, if you know Andrew Atra, he's on he's on he's on the rock nine two six and Stanley T. And the build that sound when it was about we think we started building it when we were about 13 or 14. And it comes to be one of the big sounds in Lewisham. And um, yeah, that was all good. We all met at school. We was all going to school and all that. And you know, the general sort of like misbehaviour. We couldn't afford to buy a wood. So you go to a council house with shutter in get your screwdriver So this is where the park, this is, sorry, not the park, this is where the blues dancing started. Kind of, yeah, definitely. Then, I big up all the time Loosh, um, well known celebrity in our area, Loosh, you might know Loosh. Yeah, Loosh. And um, he was the first one to put us in the blues dance by ourselves. And you know, he was the first one to put us in, and we never looked back since then. So he's always, you know, put, put his hand up and say, Well, I was the one that bust you lot. And I have to give him the glory all the time. I have to. Because he, he was the first you? one. Yeah, he, he bust us. But then the rumour is long, long, long on the way. You obviously became Paje with um, PC Mystery. And a sense there, Luch obviously was managing Mystery at a certain time. Were you managed by Luch at that time as well? No, no, managing. But what, what Luch and Mystery, they had a little sound, didn't they? They had a little, I think, Ladies' Choice they had. Ladies' Choice, yeah. And um, that was, you know, that was their affair. That was their doing. But I had Atra sound. We had Atra sound long before that. Long, long before that. In fact... Ladies' Choice come just a bit before Rock to Rock, if I'm mistaken, but we go to that story a bit later on. Yes, yes, you yes. Know? But, um, yeah, we PC Mystery, we had a lot of respect from over the years. Okay, before we get into the PC Mystery saga, because I know that you guys met up later on in, in this story, but also there was a situation, I, I, I do believe, before you must have left school and then went into some job or something like that, or what happened? Work um, experience? Do you, no, or anything like I left that? school, you know what, I left school... I think I left school when I was 15. I'd done my last exam and I come out of school. That was like, that was May. And you know, by June I was working. Okay, what were we doing? By did? June I was working. I was working in a clothes shop selling clothes, <coughs> selling men's clothes. Right. And I can never, I won't forget the shop. It's called Cockfalls on Cockfall Avenue, just off the London Wall. And I was in there selling clothes and things like this. And they couldn't believe it. I was 15 years old and out of work. And one morning, and they, they, this, uh, this is a record. There's one morning I went to work and I sold three suits before 12 o'clock. And they just called me the Messiah. They couldn't. They could not believe it. I sold three <laughs> suits before 12 o'clock. They couldn't believe it. Then they pushed me up into one of the bigger shops that weren't doing too well. Pushed me up in there. I started selling. So I was selling suits. I hand over things. They couldn't believe it. I was just so good at selling. And that's been me ever since. You know, I could sell snow to a bloody Eskimo. So. <laughs> and, then, and then after that, from the schooling days, talking about the music, the music got, got in the way in a, in, in a very big way. After the sound was going on, you did, um, to my belief, you did quite a few blues dances and was known for the blues dances yeah. with your sound and that. Yeah. And then it, it carried on. Tell us how it carried on from the blues dances. Um, it carried on from the blues dances when I uh, started getting older. And I started getting myself into bits and pieces of trouble. Because you know them time, when you're getting older, you're sort of like 16, 17. Was it experience? Big experience. Because them time, you know, I was living at home with mum and dad. And you got to buy crocs and lizards. Now, come on now, crocs and lizards, in my day, and lizards were 79.99. The crocs was about 199.99. Mm. My mum ain't buying me that. So that's when the extracurricular ad <laughs> <laughs> Exercises coming, 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 you know. What did you do, Tony? Well, a lot of fraud, you know, checkbook and card and Bartley cards and all the world. They introduced me to a Bartley card, then someone taught me how to clean them, clean your signature off. <laughs> 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 someone taught me how to clean, clean your signature. So after that, now, when you clean the signature off, whose card it really belonged to, you and you name. sign it, you sign it, mm. that's you, innit? Because you can sign it a million times. That's, as far as I could, it was me signing it. Because it wasn't that advanced as it is today. Is no, that no, it wasn't at all. It was like taking money from a baby, really. It was, it was, it was really, really easy because they didn't know computerised mm. things and things like this. Not like it is today. Do you regret it, though, Tony? I, you know, I never regret my past, you know. I wish I'd done things a bit better. 
and uh, you know, a bit, I, I, my, it, my past is what's made me who I am today. So I can't say I'm ashamed of it. You so, know? so the fraud and deception that you did back in the day uh, was that the only bit of crime you did, or nah, did it escalate a bit more? It went a bit, went a bit mad after that. You know, robbing and you know, robbing different establishments and so on and so forth. But. I'm not really proud of that. So can I ask you a personal question? Did you rob from the rich to give to the poor or did you rob from the poor to give to the rich? I've never robbed from my own, never. I've right. never, like, like breaking houses and things, I never was interested in that. Because me and you's a sufferer. What, what, what am I nicking off you for? Me and you suffering the same mm. way, I would, I'd mm. never do it. So you'd, rip, you'd, you'd rob the rich to, to, to satisfy Oh, all day long, all day. All day. Because they're insured as well. Who gives a mm. fuck? They don't mm. care. Mm. You know? And back in the day, that was what it really was, isn't it? That's what it was, you know. It. And you, you, you look after your own. I, I, I would never, ever break into people's house, break into people's house and all that. You know, so the next time went on, Tony P carried on, and then Tony P decided. You, I believe, to my belief, are we at the stage now where you got the love of trying a radio station? Is that right? Well, let's start from the beginning. I kept going to jail, in and out of jail. You know, for all different types all of things. All different. What was the longest stretch you did, time? A free, a lot of free. That's and that was that went for teeth. That was a thumping down a couple of coppers outside the blues dance. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it was a blues dance. I'll never forget the road Elgin Avenue, West London. I remember that blues dance, and um, it was a house. When I come to the house, I thought this ain't a blues dance house because it was it was splendid. The house was splendid, but what they had done, the man had given the man them the keys to decorate the house. Right, and they and were they thought, and they informers. Just, they just had the blues in there. They had the blues dance. <coughs> oh, there. right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. From top to bottom, they had about three different sounds in one house. It was, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> top floor, middle floor, downstairs, there about three different sounds. In, in one, like, we're not talking about three different sets, you know, I'm talking, in a, in a house. And uh, police come. They come about seven o'clock in the morning. No, about eight o'clock in the morning. And um, started going with their foolishness. And they said, well, who's in charge of this? And my only interest was getting my records out. <laughs> right, you didn't it's, care about anything. It's just else. me standing bigs in there as, as just got, remember just got friends, just, just got friends. friends, yeah. And uh, I just to get my records out. That's all I wanted to do. So in the end, the police started getting a bit heavy-handed, and they realised apparently the man, in fact, he was on holiday somewhere. I don't know, but he, they rung him, got hold of him, and he said, "Look, I give no permission to keep dancing in this." And police just started getting on real stupid. Anyway, cut a long story short. Uh, we was upstairs trying to get out and two of the coppers got hold of PC Mystery and uh, the one at this end was twisting his neck one way and the other one was twisting his foot the other way so I just said in my wisdom excuse me officer if you twist his foot that way and your other mate twists his head that way what do you think is going to happen sort of thing who told me to say that Jesus God war they flew down on me hand up me back foot up me back and we all come to tumbling down the stairs like a cartoon like, like Tom and Jerry it's so funny and then they try to get me in the van and they couldn't get me in the van because I weren't going in there and um, in the end a geezer one of them wants to hold on to my foot but I had my other foot free so I gave him one kick in his ass and um, they got me they bundled me in the van anyway and uh, apparently this is what I heard I didn't know they said um, when they got me in the van people outside they were saying well the van was just shaking up just jumping up so and down like this so they were beating you up yeah they was, they was giving it to me I weren't going I weren't going easy at all I weren't going easy. I said, "What well, you know, one you's coming with me. So in the end, they got my head down the side of where the bench is, where you sit down. They got my head down the side on the chair with, between the little gap there. And they, one geezer had his, he's had his knee on my neck. And I could feel my neck, I, I couldn't get up. And he's was, was like, he's trying to break my neck or something. So my hand was free and I got hold of him. And I squeezed one of them coppers. I squeezed his neck. And I thought, and, you know, you can feel your lights going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. And I was just, I just squeeze, I just squeeze for my life. I squeeze, I squeeze, I squeeze. Next thing, all the cops are like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, look. Like the cop was, I don't know what the cop's name was. Say like his name was? Steven. Steve, yeah. He's like, oh, Steve's turned blue, he's turning blue. He's turning blue. And they got me, let him go. I go, you get off me about letting go, let go. Get off me. And um, in the end, they, I, I let go of him. And, you know, they got off me and they let go of me. Then it was just open day. You know, I was just like a rag doll and I kicked the living shit out of me. But um Did you go did you do time for that yeah, afterwards? Yeah, yeah, I went to court and they they um at the court they said, Well, you know, Mr. Prince they had all the evidence in front of them. Plus I, I had my clothes get ripped up because they, they dragged me across the tarmac 
on my back, on my clothes, tear out all my clothes. And um, what my defense was, well, how come no one's charging me with resisting arrest if I was so violent? Mm. You know, and um, no one did that. So I said to my barrister, well, how come no one charged me with that? And he goes, yeah, you're right. No one charged me with resisting arrest. So if I was so violent, how come I weren't resisting arrest? Mm. Anyway, we went to court, the judge said, well, yeah, you know, judge and jury. They said, yeah, you're capable of that. You're guilty, 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 you're all right, guilty. So can I ask you, with the situation, you know, we're going way forward now to this time now. The way mm -hmm. the kids are going on, um, on the madness, and, you know, this is, of course, I've got to ask you questions that other people would possibly want to know. Do you think you're a good role model with the younger generation for the madness they're doing right now? You know, as a role model concern, I... I'd like to think as a, a kind of, a, you know, a positive role model. Like with my children, you know, I, I tell them my past because I don't want them to tell them. I tell them myself. So I told mm. them I'll get on what I was get on with when I was young. So I don't want them to do the same thing. You understand? But the thing. Do you regret it? I, re I, guess I never regret my past. My past was my past, and all I got to do is look for my present and try and make the world better for my kids for their future. My how, many kids, how many kids do you have my house? Three. Okay. Boys? No, two girls. Two, two girls, girls and one boy. One boy. Yeah. There's, oh. there's, a, there's, a, well, there's a few more. Are they in the music business or anything like you? Not really, no. They like music, obviously, which mm. is, a, is a thing, but not really like me in depth, depth, in depth with, with me. But um, Do they see you as a celebrity? They kind of do. Especially the last one. You know, they kind of do, but me, me, me big children, they, they kind of, especially my son, he's grown up with me being like that. The big son and we've got a big daughter. They sort of grown up, you know, seeing me. So you came out of prison and um, you moved on and of course money was very low and you had an idea of listening to other influences off the radio, which must have been. Can you tell me who your influences were on the radio? Influences were I used to like listening to a, a radio called a radio station called Horizon. I remember Horizon, and um, obviously LW. I was very influential. Yes. Um, David Roddick on Saturday night, mm -hmm. Steve Barnard Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the reggae rockers, very influential. Roger um, Robbie Robbie Vincent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Greg Edwards, mm -hmm. very very influential to me. Even Tony Blackburn, Tony, very yeah. influential. Yeah. Uh, and I remember being that like, when I was in jail, I used to listen to uh, Caroline. Yes. yes. And she go in and out, in and out, you know, the, the way you go in and out. Mm, and then mm, um, mm, mm. I used to listen to a station called, I think that was on South, what they called shortwave or medium wave. Mm. It was called uh, Radio Luxembourg. Luxembourg, I remember. And they had, a, they had a DJ and they were called Tony Prince. Okay. And I used to listen to him and I thought, what? The geezer got my name. I thought, yeah, I'll listen to this geezer. And um, yeah, that's all my influence. And I always thought to myself, I didn't really have the idea of any kind of radio station then. Or not. But I used to listen to all these things, all different genres of music. I used to love it. I used to love punk rock, the rock, the, you know, heavy metal. Mm. I used to love it all. Chinese music, I like Chinese music, some of the Chinese music. <laughs> Chinese music. I like it. I used to listen, I used to, mm. if it made sense to me, I'd listen to it. Yeah, listen to it. You know? Always been like that. Now, I come out of jail that time and weren't really going on with nothing and you know because you're not doing is it nothing. because funds was like running low funds always low mm -hmm. you know and you know when you're doing what you do you get to you get used to a way of life mm -hmm. you can afford anything especially when you're teething because you've got money in your pocket always <laughs> you know but you get used to that way of life and when that life drops off you think oh you've got to feed the flame for the voice that's so you, right you know you've got to carry on you got to feed you got to feed your habit you've got to feed the flame and that is, that's all it is. Put petrol on the flame. You ain't got no petrol to put on the flame. So you go back into old habits. What? And eventually again, what happened? Boom. You nicked again. You're back in jail. You know. It'd be mean? easier way out of it. And I'm not trying to give anybody any influences and that. But it would, would obviously selling a bit of weed or something like that would keep you going. Well, I've never really been in like selling drugs and things like that. You know. Mm. I'd, I'd, I'm. You know. I'd rather. Well, I'd rather I'd rather fraud someone because in them days they're rather fraud someone because it's all insured anyway, innit? They don't mm. really care. Mm. The only thing, you, the only downfall is just getting nicked. If you get nicked, you get caught. Yeah, that's that's the downfall of it. But um, you know that sort of thing, it 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 toughens, it steals you, it gives you a bit of steel in your backbone. You know what I mean? To say, well, and you know the signs because so many times, like I've gone to do 
whatever I've gone to do or something and I thought oh that, this, this shop looks alright and you look in there and you think mm, something's not right there you know and they, lo and behold they're coppers waiting for you to come in there <laughs> so, <laughs> they they're, they're so they basically set you up it was a yeah trap. it's a set you up the, 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 been, mm. oh listen they've never caught me like so you know the signs basically as I know that's what that's what I mean with, with age comes experience and wisdom mm. in it if something don't look right it's usually not right walk off yeah, but Tony, you could work for the police and be an informer and get it right for them. Why didn't you choose to do that? It'd give you loads of money. Yeah, but I like my kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite nice, you know? <laughs> anyway, going on. So, obviously, you came out of prison. You carried on. Money was... The funds was going very low. For those who's just joined us, speaking to, of course, uh, Tony Pritz, known as the amazing Mr. Tony P. And we're talking about his life story on This Is Your Life. Um... So tell us then, so we're getting to the stage now where there was a radio station that was formed. Well, like I said, the last, well I didn't say, but the last time I come out of jail and by then I think my son was born and I thought I can't do this, I can't keep doing this, you know. I can't keep doing this because it's not fair. My son was born, um, I was fortunate enough to come out and watch him being born, you know, and it kind of changed my life in a way. And I said, I can't be doing all this stupidness no more. I can't be going jail all the time and all these things. And then time I was like a, what's that, a budding DJ. I was, I was a DJ. And, but, you know, you weren't, all them time, you're, you're getting, you're getting Penis. chimp money. You're getting, chimp money. You're getting stupid money. You know what I mean? Yeah, you weren't getting like uh, Robbie Vincent and, what's the other one? Froggy. Froggy. You know, earning money and all that. You weren't earning no money. So you're lucky, you're lucky you come out of dance and sort of like 50 and 60 quid sometimes. But it was all right because you had the adrenaline because you just wanted to do yeah. what you was doing. It was but, more um, so for the girls and the girls and the hype, innit, really? Yeah, I love the girls. But, you see, <laughs> but girls, you see, girls weren't like how they are, how they are today, you know what I mean? Right, Fit right. girls, we get their tits done and all things like that and they're looking crisp. Them time, all girls with granny slippers and long skirt. <laughs> 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 Tony P said that right, not me. P and Tony didn't even get involved. No, nah, true, true, true. Uh, but the girls now, you know, you get yourself in trouble quite early. Yeah. Because the girls, they look, you know, what? Have you messed up a few times, Tony? Nah, never. And I can say that truthfully, never. Mm. Because I'm a, I'm sort of man, um, uh, I'm a bit vain. I like pretty girls, so I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. Tony. Okay. Now, when I say pretty girls, I yeah. mean. <laughs> you said it that time. Well, I've done, done, done myself, innit? You said but, it. Um, <laughs> everyone's got their likes of course and dislikes, you understand? So, I like, I like. Shall we say. Girls with loads of makeup? No. <laughs> No, not at all. And when they take it off, you see what they really look nah, like. Nah, because you'll end up with your pillowcase, but yeah, bro. But, yeah, but Tony Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, bro. Yeah, but ugly skin deep, bro. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> nah, look, I'm not, nah. Let's listen, not go there because... this is the Breakfast Connector. We're going to get <laughs> into that, right? Look, but look, Tony loves listen. you all. <laughs> Tony loves let's you all. Let's talk about You understand? Uh, I love all women. To me, there's no other thing. Ugly is an ugly word. There's not ugly. There's, there's no such ugly, word as there's, ugly. There's someone for somebody somewhere. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay, that's the truth. You okay. Understand? Anyway, yeah. So carry on. So, of anyway, course now. We come out of um. There's a well. Come out of jail now, and I said I can't be doing this no more. My son's born. I can't be doing this no more. Anyway, I met a geezer. His name is Keston Riley, and um, we'll get to the story deep, deeper down. But this is the initial meeting. Keston Riley. He was in electronics. Uh, engineer and I met him they used to have a record shop down Deptford High Street I think uh, Winston Edwards used to have it Winston Edwards is, is part of um, Gibbs the book records the Gibbs label Joe Gibbs yeah Joe Gibbs record label and he, he was part of that and he had the record shop down Deptford High Street Cass had the office upstairs was his little electrical little electrical where not warehouse like little Cass 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 you Manhattan know? no 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 it wasn't no. Okay, but right. I'll let you know about Cass in a minute. Okay. And he was an electrical genius. So I got to know him and then his little you know, his little, you know, work workouts upstairs and where he's doing his little electrics and he had all these little oscill components. Oscillators and oscillators oscillators and all these things and you know, you look at it like a flipping like a doctor's a doctor's office and he's a little little, little spills on the machine and all that. And I got fast I go, what are you doing? 
One day I walked in there, he said to me, You got a radio in your car? Of course I got a radio in my car. He goes, Alright then, go in your car, get one of your tapes. Put one of the cassette there, get a cassette tape. Get, get the one you like the best. I said, Alright then. So I've gone downstairs, got the tape out of the car. He's put it in his little thing. He said, Go downstairs now and listen in your car. Put the, put the frequency on, blah, 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 and go and listen it. And I've got into my car, and I can hear my tape playing in my car. Well, you don't, what? <laughs> I go, what? I can hear my tape playing in my car, on the radio, in my car. I'm saying, I've gone upstairs. I go, what the hell? He goes, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. I, I build these little things. I've got little transmitters. He got little transmitter about big like this. He goes, from that, it's just a fascinating, I was just fascinated with this thing. I could hear my cassette tape in my car. I was, how do you, how do, you do that? He goes, yeah, you know, you get frequency. I didn't understand it. From that, it was just a fascination. I was fascinated with all the old radio thing and everything. How you get the frequency, mm. how you do that, how you do that. Well, by the time I was finished, that week, I think that was a Monday, by the end of the week, Cass said to me, let's go your ass. And he gave me a little transmitter. The transmitter was about, it was about that big. Big like that. Little it's square box. Little square box, box silver see. box. It was mm. a three watt transmitter. And we went to, I was living in Deptford at that time in the tower block, Druid Tower, I'll never forget it. Everyone, everyone knows 31 Druid Tower anyway. So, um, he gave me a little box now and we got in my house, in my flat, in fact, in the tower block. I was on the eighth floor, I don't forget. So, um, he bought some little aluminium bars sort of thing to make an aerial. So, I goes, I ain't gonna do it. So, he put the aerial on a broomstick and it's made like a, a, like a broomstick sort of thing, out of broomstick, wrapped it up and all that. Plugged in the transmitter, took the aerial out the window on the eighth floor, and mm. had it sticking out the eighth floor window, and just, we just, you know, just tied it on. And next thing is plugged the transmitter into my because I, I had a wicked stereo in my because you know I was that teeth in. I had a wicked stereo in my house, so he plugged it in, and he said, "Play a record." He's playing playing music now, and I'm playing the records. He goes, "You got a mic?" I had a proper set of mics. I had a mic and everything. And I'm talking, he goes, well, you're broadcasting, you know. I goes, what frequency? He goes, oh, it's 90.2. Like, what? He goes, yeah. He goes, Tell everyone to ring them up. Well, who's the first one around? PC Mystery. PC so they live around the corner. Yeah. <clears throat> he lived in the side of Millwall Football Ground. So I rang him up. I goes, put your radio at 90.2. He goes, what's that? I goes, look, radio station. He goes, what? I goes, put the 90.2. I started ringing people. Obviously, certain people outside the ghetto couldn't hear it. But that's in the ghetto, it's it fantastic, we could hear it in the ghetto. So I rang up PC Mystery, he had it on. Within about 10 minutes, he's round my ass. He's come around my house, going, what are you playing music and we're chatting and all this kind of thing. And that fascination has carried on from there. Since from there, Cass, he left me with a little transmitter in my house. Mm. Listen, we played records all day, all night, till my nose started bleeding. We just playing records and transmitting and ringing up people. No, we no, was saying, giving people the number, ring me, me on my phone in my house, and they're ringing me, yeah, who are you, who are you? And all this, and we were just a mystery. He did. He stopped going to college, he wouldn't go to college no more. He just come around my house all day. <laughs> we just play music all day. And it was just, just a fascination from there. That's how I rocked rock to rock What college started. do you go to, Brixton? I didn't go to college, he did. Okay. He went to dance school and all that, I did. I, mean, I was going to college. You hear that, mystery, he never told me that? Yeah, he went dance school. It was so funny. I won't tell another story. I'll tell another story. <laughs> just, just off the beaten trail. Just off the beaten trail. I, di I digress. Mystery was a ballet dancer, yeah? He was a ballet dancer. <laughs> <This one. laughs> wow. So, wow, Paul, you're he, in problems, bro. Him and his, him and his wisdom, <laughs> they decided to put on a, a show in Riverdale Centre. <laughs> and, you know, but you know Paul, Paul's never, he's never slow at coming forward. No, no, no. no. So, it's all Riverdale Centre, we've all gone to see. We've all gone to see. And you know what it was? It was um, someone that had a party down there. It was a, a fancy dress party. And Paul decided to bring his dance troupe down there. So we're all in fancy dress. You know, I've got American football thing on and all this. And we're all in fancy dress. Some people come as dressed as their mum in cardinals. But anyway, they just, they, Paul decided he's going to do a show down there. So, I mean, we just waited for the, the show started. And then we see a couple of girls come on and they're doing their dance and all that. Then the mystery come on the stage and he had a leotard on. <laughs> and he jumped. <laughs> He's gonna murder me. <laughs> He's gonna murder me. <laughs> 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 he come on. And he jumped across the stage and we went, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> We're all on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> 
saying to myself, uh, you know what? Woo! I've got to say, uh, woo, props to him, because I wouldn't have done it. First. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the whole Lewis in the river that was sent, you know what I mean? But props to him, he did it. And he come on the stage and he went, woo! <laughs> I'll tell you something, son. I thought the industry stream and he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, it was funny. It's funny. So but then, obviously. Props to him. Props to him. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it, mate. Oh, but he's done it. And oh, he's never been so oh, coming forward. Paul, oh, no, Paul don't care. Oh, we love you, it. P. We love so, you. So, good luck to him. Anyway. Okay, go on. <laughs> we're talking about. Okay, rock to rock now. So, like I said, it was. Uh, I digress. We had the aerials on the broomstick at the eighth floor. Yeah. At my front room, at the front of the window. Then we started broadcasting from there. Me and Paul, we've been all day. And obviously, we're broadcasting. And we're saying, if you can hear the signal, ring us up. And they're ringing us up on my house phone. They're ringing up, yeah, we can hear you loud and clear, blah, 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 blah. They can hear us loud and clear. And that's this is the story of Rock to Rock. This is where we start. So, where did the Rock to Rock name come from? Who made it up? Always me. I make up everyone's name. For every, I, make, I make up everyone's name. So yeah. Rock to Rock, let's get this on, on record straight, yeah. Tony. Rock mm -hmm. to Rock was Tony P. Tony P, and I had a partner. Okay. And when I tell you, I started it all off. I went to my friend, his name is Lee, Lee Lang, his name is. I've heard that and before. And he's owned Sound City in Deptford. His mm -hmm. first one was in Model Market in Lewisham, mm -hmm. the first Sound City, very popular record shop. And then he moved to Deptford, Deptford High Street, I think, or Deptford, down Deptford anyway, Sound City Records. And um, one day I was talking to Lee, and I said, Lee, I've got a radio station in. I said, really? I goes, yeah. I goes, there's nothing to write over about now, but, you know. He goes, well, Tone, if you need any help, come and see me, and we can do this thing together. And I thought, all right then. Now, all the sort of, like, phone calls I'm getting from people in Deptford listening to the radio station, they're just me and Mystery, I thought, this could, this could do things, you know. So I said to Lee, okay then. <laughs> so I got Lee involved, and Lee, Lee was my direct partner. Now, we did have a name at the time. I was in the same record shop where Cats used to work upstairs, yeah. the electric man. Yeah. I was dancing in the record shop. And I did, honestly, got truth. I was going through some records. I looked at a record, one pulled one out, it's a pink label. And um, I'm sure the label was a radar label. And the group was called City Speak. The name of the record was called Rock to Rock. And I've got the record upstairs in my house. It's called Rock to Rock. And I thought, hmm. Rock to Rock, Rock to Rock Radio, that sounds good. That's, that's where Rock to Rock come from, it comes from a record. Wow. You understand? And I've got the record upstairs. And then what you did, you started recruiting a lot of big names from South London. Well, to come. How did that's that come another about? story. I mean, I didn't really start recruiting, everyone just heard, all my friends who were DJs, and there's some big DJs come out of Rock to Rock. Um, Drop some names. Mickey D, big name. Mickey D went on to air and for Sony. Yeah. And uh, things like that. And um, uh, Angie B, she went to do some big things in. Um, She's Angie a singer, isn't she? She's an artist. No, she was a. Uh, Angie B. Angie B is a white girl. Okay. Yeah, I know and, she's a white girl. Yeah, and she went on to do some big things in Belgium or something. Promoting, isn't it? Yeah, well. promoting mm, and, mm, mm, and uh, A and R mm, and things mm, like that. Mm. I had another one called King Henry. He, he just to sell us records, but he, he turned to be a massive DJ, a big DJ, like playing with Froggy or people, people mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, obviously, we could never leave PC Mystery. PC Mystery is a, one of the pioneers of the game right yeah, now. Yeah, and you know, and well, he, he don't really speak of it very often, but Rock to Rock sort of like, sort of like made him. Well, yeah, the name was because you guys, to my belief, one of the most popular thing that everybody remembers, Rock to Rock. We've had so many breakfast DJs. We've had so many. I'm a breakfast DJ. You're a breakfast DJ. Yeah, yeah. But your breakfast DJ got even bigger because you decided that you and Mystery were going to do a breakfast show, which was very, very popular. Whoa, you got it wrong there. Have I? Sorry. Yeah. Okay, Maybe correct me. Right, because Mystery never did the breakfast show. Oh, he did. Mystery had his show at ten o'clock. Okay. His show was his show at 10 o'clock, and at 10 o'clock at night, mystery. He had the place locked. With, sl with Rare Groove, wasn't with it? With Rare Groove with and whatever Groove, the Soul mm. Music, Rare mm. Groove, whatever mm. he had. But he had the place locked <clears throat> because, and you know, he had his little voice and he was 
you know, all these little jingles and all that. He had the place locked at 10 o'clock. Yeah, but there was you and Mystery was a partnership at, on on the radio. All right. The thing way after. Oh, okay. was way after okay. Rock But you rock. did breakfast, though, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did yeah. breakfast way after Rock to Rock, though. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so speaking of Rock to Rock, at the time, I was doing the breakfast. Um, Mikey Simpson... Yes. Was doing the early breakfast. All right. Yeah. Right, Mikey Simpson. Yeah, All rest right, in peace, Mikey. Mm. He was doing the early breakfast. Where what started at? I think because he used to do his. He was a night manager at Tesco's in um in Victoria. Mm. Mm. And it was funny because he used to say to me, "Tom, come down." I used to go down to do my shopping. <laughs> he used to give you free food. All the time, you just walk in there. You know, <laughs> two o'clock in the morning, you walk around with trolley and, and <laughs> to Tesco's. Oh, mate, we used to rifle them. Anyway, you leave that one side. Leave that one side, They used to get rifled, mate. But anyway, um, that's another story. Leave that one side. But yeah, Mikey used to come and do the early morning. So he used to leave his shift at five. And so he'd start, the he'd start at... Oh, no, no, he, he, graveyard. Graveyard. he was early it was breakfast. early breakfast. He used yeah. to start at six o'clock. He used to do two hours. Or sometimes he'd get there at five. Mm. He'd do whatever. And I used to come in at eight. So my show started, show started at eight o'clock them times. So um, it was Mikey, then me, I do my show till 10 or 11. And then uh, after that, it was the brothers. Remember the brothers? Yeah. 76 and Hippie. Yeah. And this this time, Rock to Rock has just started, it's just starting getting notoriety and that's getting really, really big. And I thought, well, I couldn't believe the way it just, it just sprung up like that. Well, it, then, did, it did spring up like that because on top of that, you guys had South London locked down which stretched into you know what anyone that could hear us had it locked yeah, anyone locked. that could hear us mm. East London good lord you know it, you know the truth we was more celebrities in East London than more South because mm. everyone sort of knew us in South mm. but in East and all that and even some places North they only could hear the voice mm. but in South they all knew us so mm. all they could hear the voice East and North they could just hear the voice so when they see us they, it was like celebrity status I'm going what <clears throat> but then after that of course the the situation um, of Rock to Rock, as I said, you did the blues dances and then you managed to sort of get people because of the type of people that were listening to you. Um, club owners started in Yeah, they jet. started knocking the doors. So tell us, which was the first club that you guys really blew up? I'm going to say the first one that really went mad, I'd say Continentals. Continentals. And Wandsworth Road with John and... Um, and them down there I think the first one because and I'll tell you this from now we went there we went down there's rock to rock and I don't think nothing was going on really on, on the Monday night now I tell you who used to run that um, I mean I might slip I might have gone a bit forward fast forward a bit too fast but who used to run that was um, DJ Legs latest edition and Big G nasty boys yeah they used to run that before there was only like kind of sound <coughs> they run that and I think they run um, they run the nights, a couple of nights they're down there. And Legs always says this to me, you know. Legs said to me, because um, he said he said he must have told Big G that uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have um, Tony P down there on you know Rock to Rock down on the Monday. And um G said, Oh you do it way so I can't be bothered. But at that time, and I'm going way, way forward now, or should I go so far forward? I don't know if I should go far forward. But you know, he had Rock to Rock in the house and on the Monday night, ram. And Big G weren't there, so he said he didn't want nothing to do with it. So let's mm. away, nothing to do. All right, fair. So he lost out. Mm. When he when he found out it was Ram, he could not believe it. It was Ram out on a Monday night in Continental. They could not believe it. Ram, 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 Ram. And um, another story about that as well. Night moves. Rest in peace, Trevor and Spence. Trevor and Spence. Yeah. You know, night moves again. I think one Christmas, I said to Trevor, "Can I have a party down?" He goes, well, "Don't take Christmas Day." Because no, no, we do Christmas Day. He goes, "Tony, you can have it for nothing." Okay, nothing. I do it for nothing. Cool. Just you know, any money you get at the door, keep it. Thank you very much. All right then. Christmas Day, jam, 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 jam. We could not believe it. So that's the names you had on the bill. Oh, uh, just the truck DJ. Just me, Mystery, Frenchy, um, Mike, Mickey D, um, Inspector. Was the Inspector there? Them times? I don't think Inspector was there. Them times. I can't remember if he was there. Them times. Um. Johnny, Jamie, cousin, he's mm. rest in peace, Johnny. Um, a few big DJs and Mikey, and you know, but it weren't even individual <coughs> DJs, it was just rock to rock itself. So, so the name had the biggest clout, 
Yeah, that's the name, really. <coughs> they, didn't, they didn't care who DJ was on. You know, certain people there. They didn't really care. It was rock to rock. They're coming into the rock to rock. So most of the clubs in South London, you had it locked down. You then tripped over to East London and you started doing a lot of blues dances in East London. Did you notice any rivalries with different parts of London? Because at the moment, our children are going through some really difficult times as youngsters with this area code crap. But let's be real with the game. From back in the day, as you growing up as well, sound man, getting jealous of each other and stuff like that. Did you experience any of that with rock to rock being a big entity at that time and going into another area? You know what? I could honestly say, me personal, I never experienced anything of it until the, a bit more later. Mm. I saw the jealousy, ugly head rise up. Mm. I, I, even then days, say like, and I'm just going off the beaten trail a bit with Rock to Rock. I'm just going to individual like people. When we was playing, so right, say you got Just Good Friends, you got Desi G, Barry White. I think them time they was like a sedition them times. Mm. And you got you got Mystery, you got um, you got the Brothers. And whoever was in the dance, you got Company Soul Sound, big mm. up Dennis. Dennis, yeah. You know, you got them man in the dance. And you know what? We're all like a little, we're all like a little, we're like a little gang. Because, mm. like, you know, I'd ring Dennis or I'd talk to Desi, I'm like, hey, what are you going to drop? Boy, I'm going to do this at a certain time, then you could come in with the reggae, then, you know, that man could come in with a bit you of see, reggae. See, that's very funny you say that because that's organisation and that's fairness. But that's right how we want the natural profession to say it was. DJs don't do that these no. days. No. It's Everyone all like wants a, it's to be a very cutthroat. It's very cutthroat these days. Right. And we should go in the dance just like that. Well, you know, even if we don't talk before, when we go to the dance, we see each other. Mm. Well, I'm gonna drop some reggae. I'm gonna drop studio one. What are you gonna put? Oh, I'll come with some red groove after. That. And we used to have our little plan. Mm. It used to go perfect. Mm. And we keep them dark people keep them rocking till hours of hours of morning all the time. Where it's gone now, I don't know where it goes. But like I said, I digress. That's how we was in that day in them days there. It was all uh, uh, you know, it was just, it was just all a, a, a camaraderie thing. We was all just all friends doing what we do, enjoying mm. our music, playing music. You know, mm. it worked nothing for me to say, well, what was that, Dennis? You playing there? Mm. There's a situation with a particular record that caused a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. Body fusion. Mm -hmm. What is all that about? I don't know why it caused controversy. It wasn't never controversial to me. You know, a lot of people tried to claim. Them do this first, them do that first, and they're just all chatting rubbish as far as I'm concerned. When I got that record, Stanley T discovered that record. Okay? And Stanley T, he played me the record, and I thought, wow. As I heard it, I said, wow. And um, I think that's, we just formed Just Good Friends. It was me, him, and Biggs. And I think we were playing down. Um, where were we playing? I can't remember if I played it. Uh, the place in, in uh, Peckham. Bouncing ball. What's it called in uh, the Fez? No, in no not the Fez. Whatever it's Zico, called. Zico's. No, man. Before them. Oh, it was know. called Bouncing Ball before, but then it changed names into clear. something. Anyway, there we was playing in there, and uh, that's the first place I heard it, and I thought, wow. Since then, Stan gave me the, then Stan gave me said, look, I'm playing on the radio because then I had the radio going, going good. Rock to rock. He said, give me to play on the radio. I played. Rock, I played uh, Body Fusion. One morning, from the Monday morning I played it, it turned into the Body Fusion show. That's what it was. Because I couldn't take it off. And then time, we had pages. We had no phone. Yeah, I remember pages. We had pages. <coughs> and the pages was ping, 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 reeler, reeler, reeler. And it was playing. The, I played the first day. It was playing for about an hour. About 45 minutes. You can imagine. That's a long time on the radio. You know what I mean? And I, I couldn't, every day, they just would play that record, play that record, play that record, play that record. Play that record. Now, since then, um, I was playing it. One day I left a record. I left. I left my record was in the studio, and um, well, Some, someone stole it. Well, that's it. And no, no, he said he, he said he didn't. Was it one copy? Well, I, had, I had one copy. I had the original copy in my bag. Yeah, but I shouldn't have left my record in the studio. Tell you the truth, but I'm thinking, boy, you know, what I mean, I didn't think I was going to die and write from a record box. But then PC Mystery, in his wisdom, and he took it down to a dance. He mashed up the dance with it, and I thought. I think my cousin ring me, he stopped the wires from Street Life wrong, man. Like, where, did, where did Richard get Body Fusion from? I goes, huh? He goes, you, you got yours? I'm like, this is my record box. I went over to my record box, lo and behold, record not there. And I thought, what? Yeah, but he's your bona fide. Shouldn't that really bothered you? Yeah. It didn't really bothered you. And was it, was it back then, obviously, you wanted to be the only one that played it? No, that's not true. That's not, that's not true at all. So tell me more. It just, just said I was the only one that had it. Right, right. <laughs> you know? 
Right. And um, obviously, I just said, we're just good friends, innit? So people that's the hire us, the only way you could hear a body food is just to hire just good friends. No, <laughs> so you blocked it? You didn't really block it. <laughs> Listen, you know when the sound, you, if you're sound, you've got to have something. Some yeah. of those ain't got. Yeah. And that is it. That's yeah, just but that, what calls yeah, yeah, tone that happens now with music. You're not benefiting the artist, though, are you, really? If you're just holding it and thousands of other DJs can't get it because you got it. Let me tell you something. Starview didn't print one, did they? No, they printed loads. Right, so you should yeah. go and buy it. We just had one. But you see, when you're an avid record collector, let me tell you something. Stanley T, when it comes to records, number one, because, you know, I mean, I, I can remember Stan, he will go to Manchester to buy two records. Yeah, but it was big in those days. It was, it was dedicated like that. I mean, I've been Brighton, I've been Manchester, I've been Newcastle to buy two and three tunes. But I'm thinking, so why go that far and buy one record? But when you get the bug, when you get the bug, you get the bug and that is it. Yeah, but the bug is to play the big tunes on the radio. Well, this is the whole thing. And this way it was wrong these days. Remember, I body fusion playing mm. for how much weeks? And then we played out and it would, I'd, 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 I'd to break people, I used to break people into records. But then everyone's talking about Body Fusion. I'm thinking to myself, whoa, there's more records on Bloody Body Fusion what Just Good Friends brought to, brought to the table. No one can't talk to me. Mm. Shake it up. Mm. You know, Girl on the Other Side, although that was sort of like more pioneered by my cousin, Dr. Vibe. Mm. Um, what's his name? I can't, I can't think of it. Uh, I could go with it. Cash in it. Mm. Right, that's, um, I don't cut it, I'm really new. Um, in my conscience, patting the love lights. And um, lovely is she. That's the toy adaptation. The first person I played that, well, that was Sir George played that. Uh, no, we played lovely. They played Cap Kochikaya. That was uh, Sir George. Mm. Um, there's too many. You know, we just could talk many. all day all long. All day long, I could tell the record that Just Good Friends walked to the table. You know what I mean? But as so we like, as we move on, is that all put to bed now, though? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. People still coming at the woodwork saying they played this way. I'm like, all oh, right, whatever. You know, if, if anyone just shoots to themselves, they'll, they'll say to themselves, well, no one played it before Tony B, on no radio station. And they, if they treat themselves to them, then the legs are older with copy. Next one to get a legs are older with copy. Mm. Legs started playing it. And legs was the second one to get one. I could talk, I could talk. He was the second one to get it. No one had it before, just for friends or legs. No one had it. And then everyone, it's like coming, creeping in. But remember, you know, if it weren't for me, people, they wouldn't even know what the cover looked like. That's it. But at that time, we just all played, we was all friends, we'd have a drink. You know, mm. Brandy, we buy brandy, everyone bought a brandy, everyone shared their brandy. And we were just all like friends. But it, it, it wasn't our it wasn't our job, it was a hobby. hobby. So we was all just good friends and all that. Well for the name just good friends come from. That's another that's another story, but you know. It was all good them times. I can't. I, this is what's going on these days. We're going to get into that. It's not, it, it don't but of course, it. being in all the, of course, you know, rock to rock, be mixing up with all different other stations. I mean, we could talk all day long, and mm. there's a lot more deeper stuff that we can actually go to. But then there was a situation when rock to rock. What was the falling of rock to rock? Because rock to rock went down. Well, what happened? Okay. We kept a party, and it's it's actually on YouTube. The party, and we called it. And if you can imagine, it was the Rock to Rock. We called it the Rock to Rock Bank Holiday Party, and I think the date was about the seventh of January, in winter. This was just after Christmas. We kept the Rock to Rock, like you know, the um. We called it something. Well, I said to all the DJs, "Can you say it's a Rock to Rock Bank Holiday?" So tell your boss you're not coming to work, and all this. So, you know, everyone was saying, look, no work tomorrow, so rock to rock back on the tell your boss already you're not coming in tomorrow. Say like the dance was on Wednesday night or something. It's middle of the week, Pete, middle of the week it was. Mm. And it, I tell the place, it's a place it used to call Champs in Deptford. Champs, I remember Champs. Right. Ronnie Gunn used to play there a lot, innit? Ronnie Gunn, Lee, well, <coughs> Lee Lang. Yeah, Lee yeah. Austin, he used to yeah. call him. He used yeah. to all the time. The yeah. first black man to play in there as well. And he used to be in there. But um, if you don't remember Flash Harry, rest in peace, Harry. Mm. Top man, Flash Harry's dead now. But, um... Well, we've got to this place in Champs in Deptford. I've, I've told them to say, I've told them to say, well, look, tell them it's bank holiday. Say like the dance was Wednesday, Thursday's bank holiday. You're not coming to work. Tell your boss it's bank holiday, you're not coming in. Well, we kept the party, big success. It was, we had it around, I mean, 
half seven that school from outside. We had about, at that time, imagine we had about 2,000 people in there. It couldn't hold. And people was offering me 50 quid to get in. And, you know, it was just a madness. Anyway, leave that one side. Come out of that now. The next day, boom, we got raided. Studio. Yeah, studio raid. They come, they took everything. Okay. And um, funny enough, they took the records. And don't forget the geezer. You, you, might, you might have heard of him. The radio man at the time, it was the DJ at the man at the time, his name was Chris Winton. No, I've heard of that. His name was. And uh, <coughs> he's, he's retired now, but in my day. And um, he was a ruthless Chris. Yeah, he was. He was no, you know, he, he was all right with me, you know, to tell the mm. truth. He was all right with me. He, he was fair. And, you know, he, he's caught me on the roof many a time. With nothing in my hand, of course, but he's caught me on the roof. But um, Chris Winton, he came, took the, took the studio, took everything. He took my records. I weren't there at the time, but I know my records are gone. They took my records. So I rang him up and said, Chris, where's my records? He goes, Tony, if you come down, I'll give you back your records, but you've got to make a statement. What statement to make? So tell him that tell me that you own Rock to Rock and you can have a record back. Because Chris, I'm just a DJ and Rock to Rock. He goes, who owns it then? I go, I don't know, I just play play records. And they say you have to do it, because any yeah. other they find out who it is, you're in trouble. You've got five thousand pound fine on your backside and I said, No, no, not me, I'm I don't own it. So he got me down there, the place in Waterloo, Waterloo House, got me in there, they interviewed me, I goes, look. I don't want my record back, Chris. I'm not no DJ. I'm not no owner. I'm, I'm just a DJ. Yeah. Who owns it then? I don't know. I just get the instruction to go to the studio, do my, rec- do my show and come out. Anyway, I got out of that one. I got my records back. But um, after that, they just sat on Rock to Rock. They sat on us. Every time I transmit a guy, it last two days. Remember, I'm putting up transmitters. They're staying there for like four months. No, they're trouble. And they're a lot of money. You know <clears> what I mean? Mm. And the, the, them time, transmitters, I mean, go back to Cass. Cass is a builder transmitters. Mm. And... I'm giving cash like them time I'm giving him 250 quid. Which is a lot of money back then. A lot of money, you know what I mean? Mm. And um But they start getting rid of like three times a week they're raiding me and feel like, okay, nah man, what's going on? The rung up Chris he goes, Tone, let me tell you this. From you can go on the air, and this is what he said to me. Personally, he said, Tone, if you can go on the air and say tomorrow's a rock to rock bank holiday, he said, if point two of the nation listen, you're too powerful. You're too powerful. Mm. He said you can't be doing that. I thought, yeah, but it's only a joke. He said, ain't joke to look, the people upstairs. It ain't joke to them. So I said, what, what do you want me to do? He goes, you got to switch off. He goes, Tony, if you switch off, I'm not going to oppose you. You know, you switch off and go legal, I won't oppose you. We know it's for the license. I'll say, yeah, good man, blah, blah, blah. Within that week, that same bloody week, we got a raid again. This time they come with helicopters. And these people that come down, they had some stripes on their on their... On Mil- their thing. Mil- military, they weren't military. I don't know where they come from. They're like, like silver stripes on their. I've never seen them before. I don't know where they come from, <laughs> and they're looking for Tony P. Now I think to myself, well, I can't, I can't shit myself. Really. I think, well, what do they want with me? Now, when I got to interview, I went to see one of them, and they're like, I'm Tony P. I thought, well, I ain't done nothing. They goes, well, you're Tony P. Well, you don't look, like, you don't look a gunman to me. You look quite nice. I was like, what does a gunman supposed to look like? He goes, well, we hear you sell drugs down here. This is the ghetto in Deptford, you know. Because we had it on lockdown there as well. Because the, the, we had it about three roofs up there in the ghetto at the time. But, and um, he goes, you know, you, you're a gunman. You're a pimp. You just shot gun after after police. And when the police come down here, you beat them up and leave them in the... Li- what? What? <laughs> what? You know, this, is, this, is what, this is what we hear. Well, you guys look at me. I go, look, look, look at me. He goes, oh, at that time, I... Well, Tony, let me ask you a question because yeah. this is what a rumor I heard of being on road for many years with Rock to Rock. Mm. Is it true you were the first one to have a fight with a DTI? No. That's not true. No. Okay. I've never had no fight with DTI, never. Okay. Never. They okay. respected me and I respected them. And like I said, all this come, Chris Winter used to run that. He used to come down. I've had fights with people trying to rob me, mm. transmit a man them, who to remain nameless who got broke up real bad, but we leave that one side because mm. they come and teeth, they sell my transmitter and come back and teeth it. And um, I find out it was in a bro- they got broke up. Anyway, leave that one side. I've never had enough fight with no DJ. Okay, well, at least you put it to bed. Also, then time went on, so you decided to close down um, Rock to Rock. Was, was there a big, like, the DJs must have been well peeved, weren't they? They weren't peeved because what they, they put a carrot in front of me, then they said, well, if you shut down, we're going to make sure you can get a licence. We'll make sure you get looking for the license. We'll make sure we will not oppose you. This is what DTI said to me. And um, I'll tell you what flopped me. Lewisham Council. Full of shite, as far as I'm concerned. 
because they said to, I said to them, well, look, I'm going to go legal. Are you going to give me a premises? They said, yeah, 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 yeah. So I put the I put the thing is, they wouldn't they wouldn't they want to know me. Did not want to know. They goes, yeah, but you're illegal. I goes, yeah, but I'm going legal. Are you going to give me a premises and all that? You know, I'm defending Lewisham. You know, I'm really. And this is what got me upset at the time. When, I don't know if you remember this time when they was um, doing a, a drive for everyone to get their um, citizenships, their passport, get your passports, or any citizenship, citizenship passport. This is from Lewisham Council or whoever it was. So everyone say like your mum, their mum and dad. They had to get all their papers sorted. If, you're, yeah. if, you're, if your papers, your citizenship, <coughs> your citizenship papers... If you're an sorted. immigrant, basically. Yeah, you have to get your citizenship papers sorted. Mm. They rung me up, they rung me up at Rock to Rock. This is Lewisham Council rung me up at Rock to Rock and said, Tone, can you just get it out to them? Because we heard you're the best person to do it. Can you get it out so that they will need to get their, their papers sorted? And all? I thought, yeah, I'll do that. And I did it all. It was for nothing. I just said, well, it was for nothing. And that was the, the, the highlight. I said, right, let's get, let's get this out on the air. Everyone needs to get their papers sorted, their citizenship papers sorted. Now, when it comes to get, getting the license and all that, I said, will you give me a premises? Oh, mate, they wouldn't touch me with a marshmallow, mate. They just, they just. I said, what about the thing I done the other day? And you know, another thing I done, I done a big, um, a big fireworks display down there, and I paid for it all. Fireworks display, and me and Lee paid for everything. Down there, the fireworks display, we had a dance, barbecue, and all that. In the week, down Deptford, all paid for by us. Tony, do you miss those days? I do, I do. I ain't gonna lie. But you know, you get older and you think you, you got you got different parts to know, isn't it? But I do miss it. Well, Parches is right because you carried on with radio because you came off off of Rock to Rock and then you ended up with R.I.P. to the maximum respect with um, my good good friend who I miss so dearly is Mr. Fox. Um, who I'm not sure if he had the station at the time, but you ended up on Lightning, is that right? Well, nah, there's a big story before Lightning. There's a big story before that. There's, um, um, I was in a few little stations before. I think I was on Genesis for a while. I was with Scratch Master D for a little bit mm -hmm. and, um, went on a few little stations. Well, you know, I weren't feeling it. They just asked me to come on there and, you know, kind of like, but the real show. baby was Rock Talk and um, was Lightning, wasn't it? Lightning come way after me. Okay. I, I went on Blues okay. before. There's a station called Blues mm. where Scratch Master D was. And Mystery was on it. Mm. Mm. Now, Mystery was doing breakfast. Mm. Well, was Scratch Master D? I can't remember Scratch Master yeah. Mystery was doing breakfast at the time. And um, he said, Tone, yeah, dude, I'm come sit in the breakfast with me. I'm like, you sure you're there? He goes, yeah, come Okay, this is the birth of, this is, of this is This is the partnership now. This is the partnership. He said, come and sit in. This is Blues of Feminists. He said, come and sit in with me. I said, all right, man. Well, this just... <laughs> it just, it just, it just went mad. And uh, me and Paul was doing breakfast in the morning. But um, if you know Paul, anyone knows Paul, Paul is a stickler. He's like, you know, say like it's two minutes to 12, or you must do this at two minutes to 12. Or you know, play a jingle at one minute past one. And all timing. This. He's good at his timing. That's him. That's him. That's him. <coughs> Perfection. That's him, not what he knows. I'm a Virgo myself, but he's a September Virgo, I'm August Virgo. Mm. But Paul likes it, he likes it. It's, it got to be like this. Sergeant Majorish. Well, me, hell no. So we clashed all the time. You know, and that's what made it that's what made it funny, because we clashed all the time. And um You know, I'm not no I'm not no um I'm not a sharpest tool in the box. But Paul definitely not a sharpest <laughs> <laughs> I was just take the mickey out of him, but it was good because mm. we've taken the mickey out of each other. You bounced off of each other, yeah, bounced off of each other very much so, and it, that become well, it just it just turned stupid that that, that show. Mystery and that was, of be. course, mystery and Tony P. The Breakfast Connection. That, well, yeah, the Breakfast Connection. Well, Breakfast Connection started from Rock to Rock. Right. Well, I called it from called it from then. And you've called it ever since because um, as we speed up. Um, you also um, have owned another station. You had you had Rock to Rock on, online for a little while. Yeah. And then, of course, that you decided to step off of that. And then you went on to what you are with now is Lightning Radio. Lightning is that, well, tell you what, we come off blues over some management issues or something, but we come off blues near mystery. And uh, we went on to um, Lightning. Rest in peace, Fox. Because he asked us, he asked us a few times, and he said, uh, you know, you know, we stay here for a while. But then we had a little management trouble with, with Blues FM, so I went to Light, and went to Fox. I said, all right, then you can do the breakfast. You and Paul said, all right, then. 
and you know another thing we've gone gone on lightning it's gone mad mega big big show on lightning as well you know what i mean they're <coughs> all in his wisdom always looking on the other side of the fence i think choice coming for paul yeah, yeah. and he went to i mean that's not even a good choice a graveyard show he was more popular on lightning than he was on blasty mm. choice mm. but he went to choice because you know paul's always wanted to do that it was a night time show he's really known for. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was doing like three, four o'clock in the morning. I mm. thought, is that what you want to do? So I was doing the breakfast by myself. Much more popular. Mm. Much more popular than it was at Choice. I mean, I had the place on lock with breakfast. And no one can't talk. You might think I'm boasting if you're listening to this. But hear what? I had it on lock. No one couldn't talk to, me, talk to me them times. But Paul wanted to do lightning. Fair dues. He wanted to go and do it. He wants to have bitch. Paul wanted to be legal all the time, the legal station. That's all they wanted to do. Yeah. Me, I kind of wanted it, but they didn't kind of come in for me. They did, Patrick Berry come in for me, and he said, Tony, you don't really, you don't comply, do you? I was like, what? what do you mean you don't comply? <laughs> he said, you don't, you're not really one of the two street. Maybe, maybe I was too street. But the thing is, what got me with that, the thing he didn't want me to do then, that's what everyone's doing now. Doing now, yeah. So it kind of upset me at the time because I'm thinking to myself, if you want, if you want Tony P there, you got to take what Tony P comes with, and that's what, that's, that's me. I'm not gonna come then change. Talk like Gamma Speg or talk like Keatley. I'm, mm. I'm Tony P. That's what that's what I am. Mm. I know I'm a bit controversial now and again, but I don't swear and things like that. But that's who I am, and that's the attraction. Mm. You know, I, I'm a bit outspoken, but that is the attraction. That's me. That's what I do. I'm like, I'm like what's that DJ in America? Bruce Stern or something? Mm. Shock, shock DJ. <coughs> and then sorry, and then also. Um, on top of that, you've, you've, you've buzzed on stations. You're, st- you're still on Lightning now. You're still doing your I've come back to Lightning. You've come back to I Lightning. Because I left Lightning for... I left Lightning, must have been about 2000 and... I'd say about 2008. Sort of Lightning, I can't remember. But I left Lightning. I a management problem. We're not going to go into that because... Certain people's names that have been mentioned. But... Um, there's never, never nothing to do with Fox or nothing like that. Well, it kind of was something to do with Fox, but leave that one side because All right. it's, coming, it's, it's coming, it's gone. You know okay, I mean? and, also, and I'm back on Lightning. So and also, good. just a little wee back from that, from outside radio as well. Oh. Uh, you, you also had your own lady show. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Down in, um, you had it in Norwood, and then it and then it went down to East London Roman Road. Roman Road, Road yeah, 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 near the market. Yeah, I had all the shop. I had the, I had the shop in went Norwood High Street, and I had Roman Road. Then I had Lewisham Centre. I had the three shops at the time, and um, that rent was going really well, really well. What got you into that? Was it because of the one little tailor shop that you were doing that got you into clothes? Because clothes is quite nah. I don't, let me tell you how the story goes. I had a, I had a mate. My mate's name was Steve Henry, we called him Squints. And he was deeply into fashion and things like that. And he got me into, I, I was always interested in fashion, mm. but not like that. And he used to go around selling clothes in his, in his bag of all that. And um, he got a chance to go into a shop and he come and check me. And I thought, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's go and do it. And he got me involved in the women stuff. And I, I, tell, I tell you, uh, it's straight. He got me involved in all the women stuff. I wasn't really interested in the women stuff. Mm. But then I thought, you know what? I've got a flair for this. And he taught me a lot. I got a flair for this. I can see a woman. I can look at a woman and think, "Oh, that look nice in there." I just, I just had the flair. I just, I just like a water to, you know, duck to water. Duck to water. Mm-hmm. And it just went from strength to strength from there. <coughs> and um, I just called the shop. Me and him sort of like, you know, sort of company. And then, then I, I thought of a name. It comes from a film, and I liked it. Spike Lee film. It's called She's Gotta Have It. Mm. Well, that name just went whoa. Just took off. It just took off. The first shop was in Norwood. Then I had that shop. Then I had the second shop, Roman Road. Then I had the third shop in Lewisham Centre. The Lewisham Centre weren't too great because they charged too much money. But um, the Roman Road shop and the Norwood High Street shop, very, very, very popular. Very popular. On telly, they used to go on telly, people would say, I think remember that show called um, The Real McCoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's Robbie then talking to a girl one day. Skirt you got on, we get that. Oh, you know, she's got to have it in Norwood. It just took off, it just took, it just took off, man. You know, but Tony, let's get real to of course, you know, I could speak to Tony Pew for all day long because the story is just half of what we've managed to work out and find out the more deep side of Mr. Tony P. Of course, uh, Tony Prince, aka Tony P. Uh-huh. But, but Tony, obviously, you're on Rock to Rock now. Now, in the background, you obviously do still promotions on your own self. You've done a few boat parties, you've done a lot of promotions yeah, 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 yeah. and stuff like that. But 
The promotions now. Let's get deep into the promotions now. Do you do it just because you've got the love of doing it, or do you do it because it's just the funds, or do you do it because it's just it's just your hobby? Look, promotion is no one does it to lose money. You don't do it to lose money. It just doesn't make sense. Me, I don't mind making my money back, and I don't mind if I don't make any money. I don't like to lose one pence. I don't like to lose ten pence. I don't like to lose. I don't think I should have to lose. I don't like losing. But fortunately, I've got quite a good record with, with promotions. I've, I've got about a, a seven and a half out of ten, which is quite good. Seventy-five percent—that's quite good. You're gonna get flops. You're gonna get them. Everyone's gonna get them. Everyone gets them. Everyone gets them. <laughs> but I'd, I'd be a fool to say everyone. I don't get flops. Of course, you get. Everyone gets flops. Mm. You know, you don't do the right thing. Or what I find these days is that. Um, and I'm going to talk it out here because, sure, there's like DJs in the old days, you could say you're keeping the dance, like, oh, right, I'm getting Peter Terry on the bill. I see Peter Terry. I say, Peter, there's some leaflets. Do your thing. And you dealt me out, you dealt me out, and mm. do what you could. You know what I mean? These days, phew, them, you know, you give them a set of leaflets, they stick them in the back of their car, and it's all that they want, and they want top money when they come. Mm. They don't do that. They won't sell a ticket. You know, you give them 20 tickets to sell, they sell two, and they don't want, they don't want top money. They won't help. And I find it, I've cycled with Paul on the side with Mystery. He said, well, you're not hiring to sell tickets, you're hiring them to, to, do a job. to do a job, which is fair. But me, as an old veteran, if they ask me to do it, I'm doing it. But you help out your friends, them, innit, in yeah. the business. Yeah. This new brigade of people that don't want to do anything for you, that old with me at all. But I, Tone, I, I want to I, I say something to you. Yeah. You said a statement just now, be your friends. Are they your friends or are they your acquaintances? Acquaintances are better than acquaintances. Some are my friends, some are. Mm-hmm. But I'd say on a general basis, they're acquaintances. They're not really friends. And I can say that bold and you know, bold and true. They're not your friends. You've been in the music game for many, many years, many, many years. And along the way, as well as you're going still strong, before we get into the good, bad and the ugly, I think the bad part of your life at the moment is your health deteriorated for a little while as well. Can you give us a bit of insight about that? Well, um, I can remember when I was about... Um, yeah, 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 where um, I went to the doctor and he sent me down to the hospital. I go down to the hospital and get a blood check. So I got, went down to the hospital and got a blood check. By the time I got home, there's a telegram on my doorstep. Get down to the hospital right now. I thought, what? So I panicked. I gone down there and I said, your blood, your blood sugar's really, really high. You you're diabetic. And um, I was, I remember how I was diabetic. And from then I just got into a whole war. It was terrible. Because imagine, you're the height in sort of DJ career. You're playing out every night. And they wanted to take injections. Once and twice a day, not take injections. Who remembers that? And it just got really bad. And I got, you know, from there, and I can say it from now, um, from there, you don't look after diabetes, it goes into kidney failure. Your kidneys start going funny. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, my kidneys have failed. Um, I'm on dialysis, waiting on a, on a kidney transplant. You still on it now? Not on dialysis no more. That's good. I'm not in it no more. I've had two kidney transplants. You know, I'm from, from good people. The second one is a good, good friend of mine, a girlfriend of mine, Jenny, lovely Jen, and um, she gave me one of her kidneys. So it was totally selfless. You're a soldier, time. You know what? I'm, look, they shot at me, they stabbed me on the earth. <laughs> I've everything, man, and I'm still here. You've had a gun to your head? Never gun to me head. I've been shot after. I've never gun to me head. Why was that? Your doing? Woman, innit? Woman? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, Okay, so going back to your health as well, so diabetes and um, you also had a, a problem with your eyes as well. Yeah, eyes, yeah. Eyes. Well, that's all to do with the diabetes. It's a, see, diabetes, and what people have got to realise you know, with diabetes, and let me just put this in, a, in a, as frank as possible. Diabetes is not a friend of yours. Diabetes is horrible. Diabetes ain't got no friend. What diabetes does, it's not like an ordinary disease where it does, it does, it does, you just have it it's like that. Diabetes is horrible. It's it a creeper. It picks, it picks it pick at your eyes, it picks at your joints, it picks at your feet, it just pick at your, 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 your organs, it just picks away. 
and it keeps picking. But at first, it's a little picking, you don't notice it. But then when you get to, by the time you look around, that little picking, they took a big chunk. <laughs> you don't even notice it. And that's the time you realise your eyes are gone, you know, your, your feet all get stiff and funny. And, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a management now. I'm all right now because I kind of manage it. But, huh? What's your diet? Meat, meat, meat. I'm more meat. No, I, 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 I've cut down on the meat a lot because the meat is very damaging because the meat, what they sell you is not pure. It's not, it's not pure. They tell it for sure. But, um, so I'm more, don't get me wrong, I eat, I eat meat. I do eat meat. I eat probably too much meat still, but um, I'm more, I'm trying to wean myself onto fish. But fish has to be prepared funny for me. I don't like bones. I can't. I can't tolerate the bones. No, no, the bones. No. I can't work with the bones. You understand? So you it has to just be a cut it once meat. along and pull the bones straight out once. Uh, not all of them can do it with. Right. Not all of them can do that. With. But like I said, I've learned how to eat, eat fish, so I can kind of eat it more better now. But I like a meaty fish. Don't give me all them glassy fish with one million bones in it because snapper and all that. Oh, mate, no <laughs> can't be having it, mate. Like you know, my mum. Rest in peace, mum. Mum, she make a whole another meal out of, a, out of a fish head. You know, out of bones and I can't, I can't be doing it, mate. I can't be doing so it. So I'm going like to ask you something yeah. really serious. Do you think you're lucky to be here right now for what you've gone through? Very lucky. With your very health lucky. condition? Very lucky. But there again, my mum always said to me, you're blessed. And you don't know what I'm talking about. And my mum said this. My mum passed in 2014. And before she died, she said, Tony, you're blessed. Anything you don't know how blessed you are, but you will, you'll get to know. And I think I'm just starting to know now what I'm talking about. Mm. Because I swear, anything I do, if I, you know, if I pray to God, something happens. And anyone, they try to do me things, they always get lit down. I don't know what, I don't know what it is. Whenever tries to do me something, when I've not really done nothing, all I've done is try to do good. Whenever some try to do me something or speak bad of me or whatever, something always happens to them. And I don't wish it on people. I don't wish it on people. Are they people. jealous of you, Tony? Jealous is a funny word, you know. Jealous is a funny word. I don't know if it's jealousy, you know. I don't know if it's jealousy. I think it's, you know, certain times, and you might have, you might have seen this yourself, certain times people ain't really jealous of what you've got. They're just jealous of who you are and how you are. Mm. Because they haven't, you know, they, they haven't got no personality themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, I'm just saying they've got That's personality cool. defect. That's right. You know, I, I talk to anybody. You know me already, Pete. I, I mm. talk to anyone. I can talk and I can, I can, I can express myself. And you know, I, certain times I'm, I'm quite a shy person. You know, people don't realise this. I'm quite shy. Well, I used to be. And especially girls, I say, I just say, girls, I'm shy. And I don't know. Oh, you're all right, Tom. You're all right. You're on the radio. How much? But I'm a quite shy person. You know. But I've just learned over the years. How to express myself and front it so people don't realize I'm trying. I've, I've just told a story, I was in a club once. And, um, I don't know, I just told her, whatever, anyway. The girls come up to me. I knew, I didn't know the girl, I knew her friend. And the friend introduced me. The friend, the friend introduced me to, to her. And we started, and we started talking, sort of thing. I'm like, really beautiful girl. And rest in peace, she, she died now, her name's Desiree. Oh, and, um, Anyway, I knew the friend, I thought the friend. And the friend goes, look, my friend wants to talk to you. I goes, yeah, all right then. So I went to this girl, Desiree, now, talking, talking, talking. Well, she was talking more than me. And I've gone, um, do you know this? She goes, no, but I see you look nice. And I just wanted to talk to you. And to the truth, she goes, you're the tallest person in there. So I want to talk to you. And I was like, all right, friend. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking. She goes, you're not saying much, are you? I goes, yeah, I don't know what to say. She goes, you're very shy. I go, no, no, no. She goes, you're very shy. So anyway, I goes, um, maybe can we discuss this? And she goes, what, over dinner? I goes, yes, you can do it over dinner. She goes, well, you gonna come around my house? I goes, yeah. I was going, why are you? <laughs> and I was just, I was just gone. I couldn't talk to her. Were you, me and after, me and were you a girl? Sense. Were you a girl this time? Now, where do you define that? How do you define that, Peter? I'm asking, were you? Did I like girls? Yes. What do you call a gallus? Did I have a million girls on, on, my, on my... No. Being in a shy body... I mean, I'm shy. I, I mean, I'll be real. I'm shy. I'm, I'm not a public person. I'm just, just not. And um, my brain tells me that if you don't go and do it, 
then you're just going to be st- stuck in a wall. That's the whole thing. You've so got, you've got to go and do you it. Gotta Otherwise, jump, you you've, got just, to, you've got to go beyond. That's right. That's what I do. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of them social medias. And you go, I'm not on that. They don't bother me. I don't yeah, need to not, be in my car and show my face all the time and look at my camera. I'm and not pull one it out. of these ones to jump up in the crowd and start mm. jumping around. I'm not like that. I, I'm not like that at all. And I'm not a show. People, people tell you, oh, tell if it's a show. Do I like nice clothes? Yes, I do. Do I like a nice car? Yes, I do. Do I like a nice house? Yes, who, I like who, but who doesn't? Well, who don't like that? So <laughs> if that's what they're calling, that's what they're calling me as a show off. Yeah, I'm a show off. I like nice clothes. I like nice. I like money in my pocket. Yes, I do. But I'm not going to step on your head mm. to, to make a tenner. I won't do it. Mm. And people say that to me all the time. I was like, oh, no, I wouldn't do it. Like if they said to me, look, step on Peter's head, Peter Terry's head, and pick up that thousand pound there, I couldn't do it. Mm. It's not me. Mm. A lot of people ain't like that, Peter. You know the people. Oh yeah, sort of who the cat fits. But let's be let's be real with the game. Tony P's been going for many many years. That name alone is in everybody. Whether you like Tony, you hate Tony. That name Tony P is out there. But there's also a big thing that Tony P is known by a lot of DJs, a lot of promoters and stuff. He's a promoter himself. He's also a DJ himself. But Tony, there's also a thing, three things that I like to do on the industry street. I'm going to ask you, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we know about the Rock to Rock, we know about the Coliseum, we know all about that where Rock to Rock's been. But the thing about this is, is really about Tony P, am I right saying that? Yes, sir. Right. So Tony, what I want to ask you now, there's three elements, um, questions that I want to ask ask you and one of them is could you tell me the good side of the music business the good side listening to the unknown and taking something that is unknown taking something that is unfounded and moulding it and you hearing a tune or something and you're thinking oh, that sounds alright and you play not to say you're going to turn around and say you played it first and it's like that. that is a good thing as well mm. but when you discover things and listen to things you think mm, this is nice you know? and when you've got a tune although I've had many a tune Peter when people hear it first they don't like it mm. you drum it in them you drum it in them and you try to get them thinking like that how you're thinking you know step out the box step out the box and listen so like step out the box and listen again that's what I like to do mm. let people listen good there is good parts of the music industry. I mean, the part that we're in, um, well, the promoting part and DJ part, well, COVID has smashed up, smashed us up. I leave that aside. COVID's a whole other story. Mm. But um, I like to discover new things. Mm. And I like people to hear them. And I like people to listen. If they don't like it, I like them to tell me, Tony, it's shite. What's it's your, shite. you're talking about the COVID, what's your views on the COVID right now? What's the situation we're in? My views on COVID, I think... You know, we could go into conspiracy theories all day long. I think, I do believe it's man-made. I don't think it's it was made to make one particular race suffer. But I do believe in one thing. I don't know if it... Oh, I do believe there is powers that be are sort of like in whatever jurisdiction they're in. I think there's too much people on the earth. So you reckon it's a depopulation thing? Yes. I do believe that. Do you also believe to say that this vaccine is going to help you and are you going to take it? Well, you're a very ill man. Let me tell you say something. someone with underlying health conditions. Has COVID hit you yet? No, not at all. But if you ask me if I've taken the injection, I have taken it. Have you done it already? I've done it already. Uh, I, I, how, know, do you, how do you feel? Well, obviously, you've got underlying big time. Yeah, yeah. So, when did you get the injection? In about three weeks now. How do you feel? I feel all right. I feel all right. And I tell the story on that one. I said to myself, I I can't afford not to take it. And then I, I don't take it. And then I need it further down the line. Mm. Oh, why didn't you take the injection? I don't want to be like that. Why didn't I take it? To me, I've got, I've got to admit I had my reservations about it. I wonder myself, you know, you can't cure the common cold, but you found a vaccine for this thing in the last six months. Mm. Like I said, I've got I've got underlying issues. You got major underlying. I can't issues. I can't afford not to take it. I can't afford to get because because all the tablets I'm on and things like this, I can't afford to get any virus or anything like this mm. because my immune system is very very low. Mm. I know now if I catch anything, I'm, I'm not coming out of hospital. I know that. I know I'm not coming out of hospital. They're gonna write you off. They're writing me off. I know that already. And it's a waste on the earth, isn't it? So maybe those people say that anyway. 
Okay. <laughs> but, I think it's myself. I won't come out of hospital. Do you think of dying, Tom? Yeah, I'm not scared of dying. No, I don't think of it, but no, no bother. Are no, you no, one bother. of these um, conspiracy theories thinking life after death and stuff like that? or do There you is feel... something. I think there is something. I, I, I do believe there is something after death. I do believe there is something. When we go upstairs or downstairs or we stay in, what do you call it? What do they call it? Reincarnation. Uh, it's called. Um, it's a bit of a pee, isn't it? In the middle, where you look up or down. Oh, God, I, remember, I remember little birds that fly on the trees and all that. <laughs> Do you think that was summer before? <laughs> no, no, okay, well, so there's the goods. Now, obviously, Tony, you've got to be cut, true to the point. What's the bad side of the industry? Bad side of the industry is just there's no camaraderie. camaraderie. There's no like loyalty. You know what loyalty is about? Because you don't have to be loyal to anyone. You just just be mm. professional for God's sake. Mm. You're not saying you have to be loyal to this man or that man, but that does help. But then just be professional about something. You don't have to be a hog. Do you think people should look up to you a bit more because you've opened doors for a lot of people? You know what? I don't know looking up to me. I just want people to just put it, just go on a, a level playing field. And just don't be. And that's not me in particular. But just don't be a pig. You know what I mean? Don't be horrible. Don't be like, if you can do something, so just do it. You know, everyone's trying. And everyone thinks they're better than the other. Like, I don't believe in all that rubbish. I believe it's a hard industry in the first place. You understand? Mm-hmm. You think you're a DJ. You've got, sometimes you've got like 500 people in front of you. And everyone's looking at you to make them dance. To make them, you know, make them enjoy themselves. It's a hard job. So stop knocking DJs who are trying their hardest. You know, me, I know for a fact, I've taken bits and pieces from DJs all over the place. I know people taking things from me, especially when it comes to radio. I know people nick bits and pieces from me. That's all good. If it's for the better, the better good, I don't mind that. I just like these people using the industry, making money out of it, and then turning around and just spitting on, spitting on them. Like, it's annoying. It really is annoying. And there are a lot of people who's got props in this business. They haven't got no apprenticeship. They ain't got no apprenticeship. That pisses me off. You know, they ain't got no apprenticeship. They ain't got no flipping. They, they ain't got no apprenticeship. They just come. They, 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 they already come up. Them. I'm not in it. <laughs> we've always got the good. We've got the bad, and there's always an ugly. Does the um, bad go with the ugly? Well, or is there real ugliness in the industry? Yeah, there is. Just, there's too much sussurrum, backbiting, and this. Next minute, I'll be talking to like, like me, like me and you sitting down here, and that like. Oh, you know what? Yeah, Peter, yeah, Peter, we're talking about shaking heads and all that. I've, I've gone to oh, Peter, to, oh, that bastard, you know what I mean? Mm. There's too much of that going on. Mm. I don't like it. Mm. You know, me personal, I can tell you from now, if I don't like it, I won't talk to you. Mm. I walk straight past on the street. Same person. You understand? <coughs> See you in the dance, I walk straight past. I don't like it, I'm not talking to you. That's it, I won't mm. talk to you. I walk straight past you. I'm not one of these two faced people. I don't do two faced. Mm. If I'm talking to you, I generally want to talk to you. Mm. If I don't, I won't. That's me. Okay, Tone. Also, now, um, I do a thing called... <laughs> it's going to be hard for you. <laughs> you got to know five big DJs. Five big DJs? Big sounds, sorry. Sounds? Who are your five big sounds? Yeah, we're just going to sound. Is sound or DJ? Because I, no, don't know do what, sounds. I don't know what to call them now. Do sounds, and then we will go with DJ. Sound? There's no, no big sounds in me no more, innit? It? If there's sound. none, there's none. But who are your five... Big name sounds. Who I come with, or no? In your life that you look up to and you appreciate and you respect and you say, that's the sound. The mirror one, Shaka. The mirror one, Shaka, okay. Shaka. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always got to put Coxon in there. Two. Always put Coxon in there. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, they're big people sound. You know what I mean? Come on, put carry Saxon, on. Put, put Saxon in there as well. Three. Put Saxon in there, because Saxon must have been. And Dennis Rowe, they've done really good things. And um, got two more. So George. Okay. Java. That's your five. Yeah, so I was a play with Java in the day and all that. And, and Java was a good sound from West London. We've actually had extra sound. Okay. I did put extra in it as well, I mean, but you said put main five sounds. And then I wouldn't put myself in there, extra. But we used to actual, actual, as a sound, actual, we used to go and play with all the people all around London. And Java was a good sound to play with. All right. Now we're going to go for five DJs. Five DJs. Now, when you say DJs, 
Could be DJ with an MC. That just DJs. Okay. Like as a selector or just general DJs or what? Say DJs. My number one selector we got to be Desi G. You know? As um, as the DJ I'm working from when. You know, let me change that round. Let me change that round. I'll give PC Mish for the props. Okay. So been a real, I'll give him, but as an entertainer or an entertainer, PC Mystery, as okay. a DJ, mm-hmm. Desi G. Okay. Right? Look MC. On. Yeah, cool. Put Barry White up there. Yeah. And uh, my next DJ, my next MC come down, it's going to be Hollywood. Okay. And it's arguable. Ooh, I, I just can't come with Barry, so, you know, Hollywood, very good DJ. Got a lot of time for him. You've got two um, more. DJs, um, there's a few DJs I do like, I've got to say. There's too many, I can't You're think. actually talking about MCs. MCs? Barry's an MC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, no. Hollywood's an MC. Hollywood's an MC. I can't think I know what MCs are. I really, really like this thing too. I like Frankie Beverly, he's all right. That's three. Um, Give me two more. Brandon Lee when he's ready. Okay, that's four. I'm finding it very hard. I'm funny enough, I like Dodd. Okay. A lot of people don't like Dodd, you know. I like Dodd. Wow. Like, as, as an MC. Dodd's all right. Then. That's I'll, five. Yeah. That's, that's, just that's done MCs. five MCs. Yeah, DJs are Desi, Mystery are DJs. Three DJs are like. Go on, I can't, I can't no, you got to turn. Come on, you can't tell me you can't. I can't think Otherwise, that. appreciation is not really there, then, is it? For the, uh, for the DJs. DJs, Desi. Who did you say? Desi and who? Mystery. Mystery. Give me three more. Like if you legs, can't, you legs, can't. Legs legs good DJ. That's legs. three. You've got two more. Um, from the side. Let's go with the side of the water. I like Dennis, when he's ready. He's got Dirty, Dennis. yeah. Dirty Dennis. you got one more. When he's ready. Um, mm. I find it hard out of all the DJs, all the promoters and whatever you know, yeah, you just, find it hard to find five of each. Um, it's just hard. I'm, when I get in my house, I'm like, ah, oh, bloody hell, yeah, what about, bro, bro, bro. I'm just I'm, 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 in a spot, I can't think. Um, as a good like, I tell you, was a good DJ, a fantastic DJ. Rest in peace, Steve, Steve Sutherland. Steve Sutherland, oh, yeah, top boy. All right, Steve, boy. That's me. Fine. But you know what? That's your fuck. Yeah. I can't believe how you find that very hard. You never mentioned Peter Taylor. But it's all right. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mention Tony Peter. <laughs> anyway. Um, Serious point now, um, before we wrap up, what do you want to achieve before you hand your gloves up? Okay. Um, achieve? I, I think I've achieved very much. And with my sickness and everything, I think I've done really well. So there's not really much more achievements, especially in the music business, that I'd like to do. What I'd like to do now is put down all this pain behind the deck and go in front of the deck. Start producing more and doing things. But it's hard to do now because to producing records, you know, it's got to go on YouTube and this rubbish. And I don't think. Yeah, but that's not rush, that's not rubbish because even to what I'm doing now on the industry street, no one really does the industry street. I put my industry street up on YouTube. Raymond puts his up on YouTube. Yeah, that's fair. But I'm, I'm this, talking about we should really been involved with Wikipedia, but we never have. So that's the what? reason why I personally talking myself because I'm not even on Wikipedia this is the reason why but this is not about me this is the reason why I done this so when your kids say dad what's about your life story you don't have to sit down there like a story well, and tell them they go YouTube and they'll see your story that's, that's very interesting and, and, you know, and that's the reason this, why I done it well I'm very this is a very good forum actually and what Raymond started to do the history that's very good as well and it needed to be done and props to you and props to Raymond mm. You know what I mean? Only way for else is doing it. I'm not going to take it all on the chin. Yeah, well, I just know, do what I do. And it's a very good exercise, I'll tell you from now, because it needs to be documented. It does. It needs to be documented. So you've got A to Z of people's stories. So I'm sure what? you've done mysteries. I'm sure you, I don't know if you've done Desi G them yet. I've but, done them, I've done them. So, but what I'm, so this is about Tony P. Tony yeah. P, what do you want to achieve? You've achieved so much. You're happy with where you are. Before you hang your gloves up, what is it that you want to finish your story with? Um, hmm, that's hard. There's, that's, there's too much and then not enough, if you get what I mean. Um, mm. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to really leave this country and this is just me talking now I'd like to leave this country go jail 
you're not really Jamaica. I don't think I really want to live in Jamaica. I just can't take them. They're too, they're too much. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I want to live a bit. You and, want to uh, live a bit? I like, I like, I like my life. <laughs> I don't think they're too bad. So, um, mm. I just want to go be comfortable and I don't want too much. You know, in, in, when you're young, you want, oh, you want a big boat and you want a car and all this. Like me, I'm quite simple these days. How old are you, Tom? I'm 60 this year. Wow. I'm 60 this year. And there's a lot of us, so it's Barry White, Mystery, all born 1961. So everyone's pensioners? Yeah, we are, kind of. Legs, everyone. Loves them. They're going to be happy, I'm telling them, but... <laughs> what, Oh, hey, Paul, you're in trouble, man. You are. You're in trouble. Steve Sutherland, he would have been 60 oh, Steve, this year. Man, that Rest in peace, Steve. Steve. And um, he would have been 60 this year, so it is what it is. But, so, um, right. so, obviously, you want to go... Buffy C. Okay, Bubs, yeah. Buffy's about 84, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Colin. All right, let's be, let's, let's be real. Um, I'm a DJ, and I want some influence from... You know, a big, inspire, inspirational person like yourself. What advice would you give me to get into the music business? To get into the music business? Is it worthy? It's, um, it's hard to do. Because I find it these days like a big brother act. You know, if you don't know people, you ain't getting in. So it's, who it. you, so it's who you know? It's who you know. And that is very, very true. It's who you know. I agree with so that. if you don't know certain people, you're not getting nowhere and you won't get anywhere. You right. won't get nowhere at all. The door will be shutting you like that. So you've got to know. And another thing, even if you don't know people, you've got to be willing to push. Mm. You've got to be pushing and you've got to be knocking on the door all the time until people get fed up when they open the door. Mm. And that's what you've got to do. Don't sit there and think people are going to put things in your lap. Nothing works like that. Nothing works like that. You know? When I was young, well, we was all young, we was quite fortunate that... Um, People wanted to hear what we had, you know, and they hear our talk, you know, we play a record, and they wanted to hear it, but now it's very, very difficult, man, because everyone's got the same bloody records half the time. I don't like to, I don't, I don't, I don't like you, I don't like playing with the same records all the time, anyway. I like to find things and play them. Yeah. And I, I, I like to, I tell you, the great pleasure for me, going back in my archive and find something like, oh, I don't remember this. And I pull it on. Where do you get that from, Tony? I've had it in my box about one million years, but I thought I had it. I love things like that. That's that's me. That that inspires me. What was your first record you bought? I see. I can see clearly now, Johnny Nash. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what. I can definitely see it clearly because I can see it clear into your lifespan now. I can clear clearly see into Tony Prince, aka the original, the one and only Mr. Tony P. And I would like to say this has been all about your life. On behalf of the Industry Street and um, SD Media, I'd like to present you with this little gift to say what, thank you so much to, for your contribution towards the music business. You know what, if my mum was alive, this would be in Jamaica with my mum. She's got all my trophies in, in, in Jamaica. <laughs> got them all, all my football trophies, all my, me, my music trophies. So respect, bro. And I'll tell you what, this will take pride of place. It's like, this is like an Oscar. <laughs> this will take pride of place in my cupboard, mate. I'll tell you for nothing. Wicked. Tony, thank you so much. Mate, it's been a pleasure, Peter. More, Always. More than a pleasure. You know me and you. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go, Tony P. You got to find out how he started off. Much respect. Where does the, the Tony P come from? Where did Rock to Rock come from? You heard the founder of Rock to Rock, Harry, put it together and all the rest of it. We've got another big story for you next week. Watch this space. Peter Terry's got more big names coming your way. Take care. Keep the streets clean. We're out for now. Industry Street. Peace. Peace.